Hello everyone, my name is TS Page, and today I bring you the one and only Oryx 3 Phase Chain Guide. In this guide, I will cover everything that you need to know for Oryx 3 and all of its phases. This guide discusses many high-level topics relating to Oryx 3, as well as provides the necessary background info for these concepts to be understood by even relatively new players. For more experienced players, some things covered in this video will already be common knowledge to you. So feel free to use the timestamps on screen or in the pinned comment to navigate ahead. If you already understand some of the topics covered, I try to pace the video really well and make sure it's entertaining all the way through. So feel free to stick around. Before I get any further into the video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Salcosa and Fametime for making this possible, as well as shout out Oryx Sanctuary itself. If you're not already a part of Oryx Sanctuary, there will be a link to join down in the description below, where you yourself can get some experience doing Oryx 3. And last thing before we hop straight in, if you do enjoy the video, press buttons. It can be the subscribe one, it can be the like one. You can mash your forehead against your keyboard and leave a comment. I'll appreciate them all. Without further ado, let's hop straight in. Now for the stages of the fight, I'm going to keep this relatively broad because I don't want to go into too much depth when it's really not necessary for this video. There are some key points about each phase of Oryx's fight though that does have some impact on the later sections that I will cover though. Oryx has six main sections to his fight, which you'll become familiar with very quickly after just a few runs. The beginning of the fight contains an empty room with only Oryx and his three messengers which will need to be damaged in order to begin doing damage to Oryx. Once he reaches 80% HP, he will enter dominance, spawning pet stasis portals around the room, which will shoot in assorted patterns. At 60% health, he enters dance phase, commonly referred to as prom night for the fun of it. Luckily, this phase only lasts for 10% of Oryx's health because it is rather annoying to deal with the constant AoE shots that reduce the area in which you can effectively maneuver around the boss room. Now at 50% health, the fight begins to actually get difficult as Oryx 3 becomes exalted. When Oryx 3 becomes exalted, all of his individual phases stay essentially the same with certain ones having small variations and all of them having increased damage by approximately 20%. Be aware that pet stasis portals now have the ability to insta-pop you if you are not paying attention to them. After chipping yet another 10% of his health away, you get to Oryx's most notorious phase, Celestial. This phase is worth a video of its own, but if you know what you're doing, this phase is a blessing. If you don't, well, you're likely to be greeted with a free character slot or a nice trip to the Nexus. Once Celestial is over, one of the most important changes in the fight happens. Oryx will begin to TP after every phase, putting a lot of pressure wherever he teleports to, as well as spawning silencing holy beams every 3 seconds. Last but not least, at 20% health, Oryx begins Heavens. This is when beam walls will start to travel wall to wall, either going left to right or inner to outer, which can lead to very sketchy situations if you are not prepared for them. Finally, at 5% health, Oryx enters his chest phase and the fight is essentially over. The main reason I wanted to go over the stages of the fight is because a lot of future points build off of whether Oryx is exalted or not. Because when Oryx is exalted, it is far harder to push in and do damage, which plays a huge role in some of the later topics. All right. Now that you at least understand the basics of Oryx 3's progression, we can begin to take a look at phase chains. First off, what is a phase chain? A phase chain is a set of phases that transition from one to another based off the phase that just occurred. An easy way to visualize this at a basic level is whenever Oryx starts a phase, there are two doorways that he can enter after the phase ends. For example, if Oryx begins the fight by doing sword slashes, the two doors he can go through either lead him to inner rotates or cosmos. In this case, Oryx chose to do inner rotates, which would then reset this process with two new doors for inner rotations. Now that you have a basic understanding of phase chains, on screen you can see all of the current phase chains within Oryx's fight. Rather than just rambling all of them off to you, I will go over the most important ones for damage and survivability since you're not likely to remember all of them if I were to just rattle them all off in one sitting. For survivability, be aware of nowhere to run. This phase is crazy dangerous on its own, but also chains into Gaze or Fate. Gaze deals heaps of damage even with Oryx remaining stationary upon starting the phase. Fate, on the other hand, is arguably the scariest phase in the fight, especially without a decoy. On top of that, both Gaze and Fate chain into dangerous phases after. Fate chaining into Gaze or Fleeing is Futile, and Gaze chaining into Fleeing is Futile or Control, a weakening chase phase. 
If you follow a flowchart, you'll realize you actually want fleeing as futile after both fate and gaze in order to guarantee a good phase within the next few. This happens by fleeing as futile going directly into panic and scream, or going to armor crumples, which guarantees a good phase after, via splendor, or panic and scream. The other really scary phase chain to be aware of, especially when Oryx is exalted, is Cosmos into Inner Rotates. This combo, if you're not prepared for it, can clean your character in no time, as it is literally impossible to dodge if there are lingering Cosmos shots as Oryx is coming towards you. For damage, as we discussed not too long ago, Armor Crumples is a great phase as it guarantees two of the top five damage phases after, and Inner Rotates are good as well, because on top of it being a decent damage phase itself, it chains into either Slashes, a good range damage phase, or Outer Rotations, a top three damage phase in the fight. And the last chain that I'd like to go over, which is a decent damage chain, is Melts, aka Fury Jumps, chaining into Splendor or Cosmos. Splendor and Cosmos are great damage faces pre-exalted and are a little bit tougher to go in once it's post-exalted, but still, both in general, pretty good damage phases if you're ready for it. Alright, now that you have a basic understanding of standard phase chains, we need to cover a little bit more before we can go into more advanced phase chains. This means understanding guards, staggers, and resets. Guards and staggers function very similarly in that they both occur whenever a certain amount of damage is dealt to orcs within a phase. Guards lead to orcs raising his shield in front of himself, which is an indicator to stop shooting. If you do not stop shooting while his shield is raised in front of him, he will inflict one of the four debuffs shown on screen for 30 seconds. Staggers, on the other hand, are simply a few free seconds of damage where orcs stops moving and just kind of crouches over to regain his strength. Every phase is assigned to either stagger or guard. On screen, you can see which phases lead to which. For example, whenever Oryx does adder rotations, you'll see him stagger with enough damage dealt. On the other hand, whenever you do that same amount of damage to enter rotations, he will guard instead. Resets are the final topic of this section and are very simple to understand. Oryx will travel back to the middle of the room and begin a new random phase regardless of the phase that just occurred. So, what causes a reset? A reset is triggered by the current phase chain ending. Phase chains can last between 2 and 5 phases, and after the 5th phase in a chain, Oryx 3 must reset. This rule changes though whenever a guard or stagger occurs. This is because staggers and guards count as a phase in the chain, meaning the phase chain will instead have a max of 4 phases before a reset because the stagger slash guard takes the place of a normal phase. So now that you understand regular phase chains, guards, staggers, and resets, we can get into guarded phase chains. Now notice how I don't say stagger chains here as well. This is because despite our best research, there is no conclusive chain after Oryx is staggered, but rather we assume the phase after a stagger to be near random if not entirely random. But the same cannot be said for guards. Whenever Oryx guards during a phase chain, the chain continues on a predictable path, but not with the same phases as a standard chain. Rather, whenever a guard is triggered, the two phases that can occur next change from their standard variants to their guarded variants. Now I understand this may be a little hard to follow, so let's go back to our visualization from before, but instead using Cosmos. Cosmos' standard chain is inner rotates or stationary, but when he is guarded, the phases instead become Cosmos again or Splendor. The reason I use this one as an example is because it is the most common guarded chain early in the fight and is the easiest one to recognize in real time. On screen now, you can see all of the guarded chains, the most important ones for damage actually being Cosmos, which we just discussed, as it leads into Cosmos again, or Splendor, which are both very solid damage phases and fantastic early fight. Slashes is great to guard as well for damage, as it gives you a chance at Panic and Scream, or Armor Crumples, which if you remember back to the standard phase chains, Armor Crumples is guaranteed to chain into a good damage phase unless you guard in which case armor crumples will chain into a bad damage phase, being either control or fleeing. Fleeing is futile is also a really bad phase to guard, but in bigger groups it isn't likely to happen anyways because it is just a terrible phase for damage. Obviously these are just a few examples, and memorizing all of these standard and guarded chains will likely take a few weeks, but if you ever plan on becoming an RL or leading small organized runs, these are very important things to know. With that said, almost all of the resources used in this video are public access within Oryx Sanctuary's Discord. 
I will also link a lot of the graphics in the description below for easier access, and there's even a Quizlet to use made by Salcosa, which I will link in the description as well, which can help you learn phase chains even faster. If you somehow made it this far, comment the word godly. It'll be funny to confuse the people who don't make it this far, and just shows me that you made it this far, which I really do appreciate. Leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy, and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below. That's all from me. I'll see you in the next one, and peace.